Alright, we started off the year by crossing over to great things, to new things. You know, we had a powerful crossover service even in the beginning of the year, signifying that we're crossing over from the old to the new. Amen? Amen? It was a powerful, powerful service. We don't put our faith in the new year. We don't put our faith in the new year, but we put our faith in a God that is able to do all things new. Come on, give Him the praise this morning. Pastor Vincent preached about the Father's love two weeks ago. We're on our unstoppable love theme for, this, for next, this year. And I believe that God has got powerful messages that are coming your way that you will understand how powerful this love of God has for your life. And I want us to understand it a little bit further about the Father's love for you so that you will be able to go through this year and what God has for you with boldness and victoriously. To me, the Lord spoke to me that the greatest, the single greatest issue of the body of Christ is not so much sin, but the single, single greatest issue of the body of Christ is that of an orphaned spirit. Is that of an orphaned spirit. What do I mean? That many of us still do not know who we belong to. We don't know who we belong to, therefore we still live our lives like those who yet to have known to have a saviour in our lives. We continue to live in what I call a sin management lifestyle. Don't do this, don't do that. Complain about this, don't look at that. It's a sin management lifestyle. When you know who you are, sin has got no hold on you. Hallelujah. When you know who you are and who you belong to, sin has got no hold on you. You see, the word orphan was mentioned 50 over times in the Bible. And in the Greek, it means orphanos. The Greek word for orphan is orphanos, which means without father or fatherless. It means destitute of a teacher or guide without known author. Without known author. Now that's very interesting because I think many people don't know who is writing their story for them. Many people are looking for voices to tell them and sculpt and design their lives from all sorts of influences, from all sorts of voices. Today, if you and I know who we belong to and how much our Father loves us, we would walk through this year with our heads held high in His presence daily, knowing that you are not an orphan. You are not an orphan. Don't walk around behaving like one. Don't walk around like, as if you are one without a known author. What does this Bible, who does the Bible say we are? In 1 John 3 verse 1, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed to us, that He should call us children of God. But I love this version in the message where it says, What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. And that's how he writes it. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called... We're called... We're called children of God. That's who we really are. Wow. What a powerful truth that is. To understand more about this orphan spirit, I want us to turn to a very familiar scripture. In fact, this scripture was used even in your home Christmas party just recently. Last, and it was from there, as I continue to read and, and meditate and study on it, the Lord spoke to me about this message. It's none other than the story of the prodigal son, found in Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32. Luke chapter 15, verse 
11 to 32. If you're taking notes, please go back and read the entire chapter. Please go back and read the entire portion of Scripture. But for today's reading, I'm going to concentrate on verse 11 to verse 19 and verse 28 to verse 31. All right, come on, let's stand together and let's read the Word of God together. Let's honour the Word of God together because this is the Word that brings life. How many of you want the inheritance of God? All right, I love it. Both hands flying up because we want the inheritance of God. Then listen to His instruction. Read His instruction. Don't be like those who buy a new gadget and then throw away the instructions and try to figure it out. Read His instructions because here lies, herein lies everything that you need, the instructions that you need to gain His full inheritance. Amen? Amen. Let's read together Luke chapter 15, verse 11 until verse 19, and then verse 28 to verse 31. One, two, three. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the youngest son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he spent everything where he was severe famine in that whole country, he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with pods that he, the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have put to spare, and here I am starving to de death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got, oh sorry, let's read from verse 30, 28 onwards. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when his son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitute comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Next slide. He says, my son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, God, that your word will speak so powerfully and so clearly to each and every one of our hearts. Open our hearts, open our spirit, O oh God, to hear your voice and your voice alone. Let every other distraction, Lord, be blocked out in the name of Jesus. Let the focus be on you and you alone. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. You see, this story very clearly tells us this, that you can have a father and yet not know who you belong to and live like an orphan. How many of you really know that you have a father in heaven who loves you and when you became a believer, He gave you the right to become the sons, His sons and His daughters. Just like what Pastor Sue read earlier, that the sons and daughters, if you ask prince and princesses. You want to start the year differently? You want this year to be different? Then start believing and living a life that your Father has for you. Because only and until you know who you are, you need, you really need to know who you are, you really need to know who you belong to. Because if you know who you belong to, you will know you will have an identity. You will have an identity. When you don't know who you are, you don't know your own identity. When you don't know who you belong to, you don't have an identity. Two days ago, I was speaking to uh, a a. a lady who came to our church for her son's marriage registration. And the mother was just sharing her testimony out of the blue. She just shared with me her testimony of how um, many years ago she accepted the Lord. 
and that she, was a, she came from a very staunch Buddhist background, and how her grandfather was into witchcraft. He was a bomo, in fact. And so she was deep into occultic practices, and she shared, you know, it was very hard for her when she accepted the Lord. One thing, the hardest thing for her was this, her, that identity. She had to figure out that identity that she had in the Lord. And she said this, that my identity was not of anything else but, as, as, but that of the child of God. It was only until she realized that she was a child of God that she, was she able to receive God's love. Was she able to receive everything that God had planned for her life? The younger son, although belonging to a family, he had a father who loved him, he didn't know who he belonged to and as a result demanded for his inheritance, left his home and with his share to go to a place where the grass seems greener. Do you know what? He actually orphaned himself. He actually orphaned himself. How many of you, when do you usually receive your inheritance? When the father dies. When the father dies, correct? But this guy... He demanded for his inheritance. He took it and he left like as if his father was already dead. He actually orphaned himself. Many believers still struggle with, with this matter of identity. We struggle to find it from different sources. Remember, the definition of, of orphan is one without known author. Many of us are still looking for someone to author our lives. You look for significance in your career. You look for significance in relationships. You look for significance in, in, the, in your achievements. You associate your identity with the accolades that you receive. But your identity is not found in any position. Your identity is not found in wealth. It's not found in any relationship. The younger son took his portion, he left, and he squandered off everything. The older son accused him at the end and said that he spent it on prostitutes. Perhaps that was true. He was probably looking for that identity in a relationship. In someone whom he could love and who, someone who could love him. He was probably looking for uh, the identity through wealth. You know, now I'm a rich man. I can spend my friends. I can buy him meals. I can buy things for them. I can, these are, are my friends because, you know, now, now they, they, they need me. They depend on me. But what happens? Everything was gone and he was left with nothing. Abandoned to the point of now having even to feed pigs. And not even eating the food that was given to the pigs. So your identity is not found in lavish living. It's not found in your spouse or in the millions or having a name being known in the industry. You see, church, when you break your attachment with God, when you break your attachment with God, you will end up being attached to another thing. And that attachment is always, always leads to slavery, not sonship. When you break your attachment with God, it always, you will always be attached to another thing and it always leads you to slavery, not sonship. Only the Father's love can satisfy your soul and give you true purpose and identity. Knowing that you are Loved by your Father. The Bible says, when the Son came to His senses, when the Son came to His senses, hmm, I think this is a word for some of us. Some of us need to come to our senses. Turn to your neighbor. If it's a guy sitting next to you, if it's a man sitting next to you, say, Ape, Ane, come to your senses. If you're sitting next to a woman, say, Woman, come to your senses. Come to your senses. He had a father. And he was a son. Only when he realized and he came to his senses and got up and went back to the presence of his father, was his dignity restored? Was his purpose restored? Was his position restored? And you need to know and you need to come to your senses that God didn't save you to be a hireling. 
God didn't save you to be a hireling. God didn't save you to do things for Him. God doesn't love the CEO or the COO more. God doesn't love the person who gets straight A's more. God doesn't love the one who is more benevolent more. He doesn't love them any more than He loves the father or the mother who takes two or three jobs just to keep afloat for the family. He doesn't love them more than the man who sleeps under the bridge homeless. That's what the father's love is. It's not about achieving things. It's not about finding those voices that, that tell you you are good. I don't care what the world tells me about me. I care what my father tells me about me. I care what the Lord says about me. I care what the future has been written for me by the author of, the, of life for my life. Am I talking to real people this morning? It's not found in someone saying, I love you. Unless you know that your identity is a son and as a daughter of the Most High God, you will always try to look for it in all the wrong places. In America, there are some states in America where they have mass burials. And what are these mass burials for? They're actually for people who have been found dead in alleys, in parks, in apartments, and then when, they, when their bodies get to the morgue, they put up notices that, that they found a body here, and then they give some description, and they wait for someone to claim these bodies. But many times, these bodies go unclaimed. No one comes forward to claim the bodies. So what happens is, in different states, they will have mass burials. They dig a deep trench, they put the bodies in boxes, and they lay them side by side. They close up the trench. There are no markings. There are no stones. Nothing. It may seem like that is total lostness. Total lostness of one's identity. But you know what? I think the greater loss is if they didn't know who God is. John Piper says this very aptly. He says, It is better to die unknown to every human in the world than to die unknown to God. It is better to die unknown to every human in the world than to die unknown to God. Friends, this is a year of new beginnings, 2018. And I want this year, I, I want to walk this year differently. I want to be able to pursue more of God. I want to be able to, to see what God has for me, what my Father has for me, what my Father says that I will do, what my Father, I want to be the center of my Father's will, not in the center of someone else's will. And I pray that this will be your prayer as well. That this year, as you recognize that you are a son, you are a daughter of the Most High God, God has a plan for you and God has a purpose for you that is marked out, a journey that is marked out for you. He's writing for you right at this moment. He's writing and authoring your life for you. Don't try to find your identity outside of the Father's covering. That's what the younger son did. He was trying to look for his identity outside of the Father's covering. Let God write your story. I've heard he is the best-selling author. He is the best-selling author because he authored your life, he gave you life, and he is faithful to finish what he has begun. Amen? He is faithful to finish what he has begun. Amen? Come on, come on. I need you to participate and know that this is the Word of God for you. He is faithful to finish what he has begun in you. If you know who you are, secondly, you know that you have a responsibility. You know that you have a responsibility. The son asked for his portion of the inheritance and the father divided it and gave him his share. You see, this is how our good father is. 
He grants us the desires of our heart. He gives us good gifts, doesn't he? He gives us good gifts. It is up to us to make wise use of what he gives to us. But instead of making wise use of this inheritance given to us, instead of making it greater and, and expanding it, he packed it all up, he left home and squandered it all in reckless living. Hmm. I I've heard too many times you know, when people don't have a right perception of Christianity, when people don't have that right relationship with God, or right understanding of the relationship with God, sometimes Christianity may feel like as if you're being inhibited from freedom. You can't do this, you can't do that, you are limited to certain things. You know, it feels like you're being inhibited from the freedom. Freedom to live life. Running away from God always starts off feeling free. Running away from God always starts feeling free. It's so exciting. Yes, I can do this myself. I can have my own life. I can make my own decisions. Yes. But it always ends in utter misery. How many of you have done skydiving before? Bungee jumping, skydiving. Oh, so few people, huh? Okay. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is likened to this. Running away from God is likened to this. The word that, that was used in that portion of Scripture about reckless living or loose living is in Greek is called asotos. Asotos, which means reckless, abandoned living, wild. Wild living. It sounds, it's like very exciting. You know, the moment, that exhilaration of stepping off Stepping off and jumping, and you're free falling and letting gravity take its, its, it, do, do its part. It's free falling. It's like, wow, hoo hoo, I feel the wind on my skin and on my face. And, and it's, you're falling and it's so exciting until you realize you don't have a parachute. Or a string that holds you up. That's exactly what it means. To run away from God, it's always free in the beginning. It sounds exciting to say, I lead my own life. I call the shots. Nobody else calls the shots for me because I'm responsible for my own life. I do it myself. And then it comes to a point where we say, it's utter misery doing this by myself. I also want us to think about this portion of Scripture and it, and it really struck something on me. Do you know that it was the Father's blessing that paid for the prodigal son's wayward actions. It was the father's blessings that paid for the prodigal son's wayward actions. Did you, did you ever consider and think about that? I bring this up, I say this to bring this point up, that sometimes the very blessings of God It's the very thing that draws you away from the love of the Father. Oh, it's getting very silent here. I hope it's because you're just absorbing what God is saying to you. That sometimes the very blessings of God, ironically, is the thing that draws you away from the love of your Father. We pray for a better year. We pray for a better business. Nothing wrong. We pray for promotions. Nothing wrong. We pray that God will bless us, open doors to our business, and grant us success. Nothing wrong. But 
as the Lord blesses us and gives us that business and gives us that, that blessing, greater projects that you have to handle, what happens? You get so drowned with your work. You get so overwhelmed with just the work and meeting deadlines and doing the things so that you would make your business better that you neglect even your Sabbath, that you neglect spending time in the presence of God and seeking after Him. Friends, do you know that the higher you go, the more desperate you need to be in one for the Lord? Because it is only when you seek Him and only when you seek for His guidance and He will give you that wisdom to manage what you need to manage, to say and do the things that you need to do. Not draw you away from Him. We pray for children and God grants us children and now those very children are like idols in our lives. We run around, around their schedule, around everything that, that they do, that, that it becomes, they become idols in our lives, that we don't, that God has taken a back seat in your family. We pray for relationships. And God blesses us with someone. Instead of glorifying God with that relationship and your courtship days, it draws you away. Both of you are led astray and draws you further away from God. Has the very blessings of God drawn you further away from the love of your Father? I want you to think about that because until and unless we really understand that you are a son, you are a daughter of God, and you have a responsibility with that whatever blessing that God has given us. And I want to make this statement in reference to financial blessings, because this was a financial blessing. This younger son got a financial blessing. When God blesses you financially, don't raise your standard of living. Don't just raise your standard of living. Raise your standard of giving. Okay, one person believes that. When God blesses you financially, don't just raise your standard of living. Raise your standard of giving. I'm not saying this because God needs your money. I'm not saying this because the church needs your money. I'm saying, I'm saying this to teach you the principles of appropriately handling the blessings of God so that God will bless you with even more and entrust you with even more. It's not... Raise your standard of giving to Him. The prodigal son spent it all, exhausted all his resources. He realized that he was living like an orphan and he had no father. And he realized how far he was from God. He realized how far he was from his father. Today, if you and I feel far away from God, Guess who moved? Guess who moved? If you and I feel distant from the Lord, if you and I have that, that barrier, guess who moved? Because God never changed His address. The Father never changed His address. The Son could find His way home. The Father never changed His address. Like I said, and I believe with all my heart, this year, the year 2018 is going to be a year where God's going to open doors and open doorways for us to enter because it's a year of new beginnings. And God's going to do, do many new things in our lives, in this church, in, in your careers, in your families. And as you receive those blessings in your life, I pray and I hope that you will be found faithfully honouring the Lord with whatever blessings that He has blessed you with. Because that is your responsibility as a son and as a daughter of the Most High God, of the Father who has blessed you with it. Not just take your inheritance, receive your inheritance, and leave the Father. Amen? Amen. And finally, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done soon. 
If you know who you are, you know that you have an access. You have access. If you know who you are and who you belong to, you have access. You have access to His kingdom. You have access to His inheritance. You have access to all good things. You have access to the promises of God as you walk under His covering. Remember the response of the older brother? Remember his response of how he, when he came back and he saw that the father was having a party for the younger brother who had gone wayward and now is back. He was so upset. His response was one that was judgmental, not one of a son. In fact, he saw himself as oppressed and not given privileges. He said, you know, I have been here, you know, I have been here slaving for you, slaving for you. He said that. I've been here slaving for you, working for you, listening to all your commands, and yet you've never even given me a goat to celebrate with my friends. That's why he said, he was not talking like a son. So many of us believers still live in this enslaved victim mentality. And you come, you live life in a life of comparison and life of complaint. Complain, comparison, and confusion. You're confused. You don't even know who you are. But like the father declares over that son, I'm declaring over you this morning. The father says to this son, my son, you are always with me. And everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. Come on, church. Everything I have is yours. This is what the father says to you. Everything he has is yours. Come on, tell your neighbor, you have access to the kingdom. Come on, tell your neighbor that you have access to the kingdom. You have access to the kingdom. Every good thing, every promise, every blessing, you have access. Aren't you sick of being sick? Tired of all the dramas and life's mundanity? I say to you, you have access. You have access to joy. You have access to peace. You have access to hope. You have access to healing. You have access to security. You have access to love. You have access to deliverance. All this because you are loved by your Father. Everything that I have is yours. That's what the Father says to you. I told the Saturday service last week. The Lord spoke to me about how great this God that, that I'm serving. I don't know about you, but I'm serving a great God. In Genesis chapter 1, it talks about the creation of the heavens and the earth, right? Ayo. Pastor Sue, we have a problem here. We need to do some equip classes. Come on, Genesis 1 talks about the creation story and how God created the heavens and the earth, right? Right, okay, praise God. And I, never, I will never forget this, this, this class that I took in Bible school. It was my first term in Bible school, first year, and one of my first classes out of the four that I took. It was the book of Genesis. And I remember very clearly, this is 20 years ago. I've never used this, what she's taught me until today, <laughs> until last week. It was very funny because... This lecturer, I don't understand why, till today I never understood, until last week when I was preparing for that sermon, I realized this. She kept on repeating this, Genesis 1 verse 2, and she talked about how that was the condition of the earth. Genesis 1 verse 2, can we have that slide of Genesis 1 verse 2 up? It's two slides down, or three slides down. And he says this, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of, of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He says, And the earth was without form and void. She kept on repeating the Hebrew phrase for this. She said, Tohu wabohu. Tohu wabohu. She kept on saying, The earth was formless and empty. Formless and void. It says, Tohu wobohu. It's not taufu, yang taufu. Ah. Please, ah, don't get hungry on me now, okay? I want, don't, don't, don't miss this. Tohu wobohu, which in Hebrew means formless and empty. What does that tell you, friends? Oh my God, this is so exciting. 
that you and I serve a God and a Father who created everything out of nothing. Tohu wobohu. It was formless and empty, but God created everything out of nothing. Now, I want you to see this, that if God can create everything out of nothing and you have access to this God, you have access to a God that is able to cause you to, to have things that you've never seen, never knew, never understood, never be, even begin to imagine because He's able to create everything out of nothing. Everything out of the whole world, who everything else was created. So don't tell God, I don't have the right relationships. Don't tell God, I don't have the right access. Don't tell God, I don't have the right connections. Don't tell God, I don't have the right financial standings. Because when you know you have the right relationship with your Father, He's able, Elohim God, is able to create everything out of nothing. And this is the access that you have that this is the access to a great and mighty Father that you have who loves you and who gives you that access, who gives you that confidence to walk in this year knowing that God has a plan for your life, knowing that God has a purpose for your life, knowing that this everything that He has for you is good, is perfect, His plans for you to prosper you, not to harm you. Stop living like an orphan. Can I get the worship team to come up? Stop living like an orphan. I want to say this to you again, that verse from 1 John 3 verse 1 from the Message Bible, where it says this, what marvelous love the Father has extended to you. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. Friends, you and I need to remember and you need to be reminded that you are a child, a son and daughter of the Most High God who loves you. Don't live like a victim in your situations. Don't walk around complaining and comparing yourselves with other things and other people because you have an identity that is found in Him and Him alone and He's writing your story for your life. You're not an orphan. You are a child of God who loves you, He loves you, and He wants the best for your life. Amen? Let's pray.